just sit before the Lord and I know that the Lord will give a message. Amen. And I thank the Lord that the Lord has given me a message and that as I was preparing this message, somehow I just felt my spirit being lifted as well. And I know the Lord will speak to us this morning. And brothers and sisters, I would like to say to us that I am not here to cast a stone at anyone, not to demean any of you, but I am here believing God that God has a special purpose for each of our lives. And I believe that God has a message for us for the year before us in these two years. Amen. I've just heard that we have, uh, we have uh, uh, changed from being an annual general conference to being a biennial conference. Is it? No. Oh, still an annual conference. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, the, oh, just the theme is for two years. Is it? Praise the Lord. Anyway, thank you so much. Amen. And uh, the Lord has given me a message on the theme text that we have up here, which is James 4, 8. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Amen. For the past year, we've been working on the theme to know Him and to make Him known. And the challenge for us has been by folk, which is to know Him and then to make Him known. <laughs> Now, as we come to the end of this year, we need to review on how truthful we have been to this thing. Amen. The questions really are, have we been really able to grow in our knowledge of the Lord, to know Him? Whatever we have done this year, whatever we have purposed this year, whatever we have been involved in the last few months or year, have we been really... Have it, uh, have it really contributed to our growth in God to know Him in the way that God wants us to know Him? And the second question to ponder is, how committed have we been in making Him known? Amen. We have been sharing, we have been preaching, we have been saying to know Him and to make Him known. Do we really grow in our knowledge of the Lord this year? That is the challenge before us. We need to ponder on that. We need to look back and reveal the journey that we have come through. To some of us, it's a definite yes. But to others, we need to be challenged again and revitalized again because we need to work on it some more. Amen, Italian. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have we really grown in our knowledge of the Lord? Do we really, are we really committed to what we have just, the theme that we have just walked with throughout the year in making Him known? That I can be part of a family that has this, uh, uh, that has this zeal, that has this uh, heartbeat, the heartbeat to be out there in the mission field and reaching out to lost souls. Amen. Turn to the one next to you and say to him or her, God bless you. Thank you for being involved in the making him known. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you see, the challenge for the last year has been both personal and corporate. Personal in the way that we are growing in the Lord, that we need to grow in the Lord. Corporate in the way that we need to be involved as a church in reaching out with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now for the new year before us, the new ministry year before us, we have another, I have put it in another beautiful way. I mean, I consider it to be a beautiful way. Is that, is, it is this. 2012, the year of the presence. 2012, the year of the presence. When you look at the theme text here, draw near to God and He will draw near to God to you. He will draw near to you. You are simply talking about the presence of God and the presence of God walking with
with you. You being in the presence and the presence being over you and in you as well. Amen. God is good, church. Hallelujah. Now, what is, what is in a thing if we do not have a plan of action? What is in a theme if we do not have a scheme of work to pursue? Amen. We as co-workers, we must rise to be the bearers of our leadership. We must be the Caleb and the Hur of Moses, of the Moses that God has placed amongst us. Amen. And we must be willing to offer our hands and say, Yes, I will rise my hands for you. In your weary, in your battle, you can trust me to lift you up. Amen. I am your her, and I am your Caleb as well. Again, go with me to the text. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. You see, brothers and sisters, this is a, condition, a conditional text, a conditional statement. A conditional statement simply means that you must first play your part before the other party can play his or her part. We must first play, to play our part before God can do His. And our part is this. Our part is to draw near to God. You see, brothers and sisters, it's not only a covenant, it's a conditional uh, statement. It is a covenant statement as well. When we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and accept Him as our personal Savior, we are in fact entering into a covenant relationship with God. And the It's a conditional statement. Go to Kayamo. And the Tiru Tabu by Kaju Mango. First, we must draw near to God. Amen. Turn to the one next and say, You need to draw near to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is good. In the last two sermons that I had with us on Thursday and Friday, I mean on Friday and on Saturday, last night, I use the theme of the topic, pursuing the presence of God. Amen. You see, brothers, to enter into the presence of God and lay hold of God and all that He has, we must first draw near. Amen. Amen. The first is to draw near to Him. You see, you cannot reach the presence if you do not take the step forward, if you don't come forward. We cannot, be, we cannot reach the presence of God if we do not draw nigh. We first need to draw near to God before we can reach the presence. Then we can be able to lay hold of the presence that are in the presence. Ni bera ni nei rau ni mano taka nei loloma ni kalo ko e bi mga rau tayo na turanga katiko ngay na nona isila. Amen. Let me go back very uh, quickly to the Psalm 91 that I've been sharing the last two nights. Psalm 91 once says something like this. He said. He that dwelleth in the he that dwelleth in the secret place of the of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I try to relate it to bring it closer to us in trying to understand the Hebrew words you see. Here. And it is something like this: He that dwelleth. The Hebrew word for dwelleth simply means. He that enters comes in and stay. He that enters comes in and stay in the the word secret place is also the word tabernacle. It's also another word for holy of holies. So he that enters in and stays in the holy of holies in the tabernacle in the secret place of. El Elyon. El Elyon means the 
supreme one, the one who owns. So he who enters in and stays in the secret place of the Holy of Holies, of the tabernacle of El Elyon, the supreme one, the one who owns, shall abide. And the word abide simply means enjoy. He shall enjoy. The shadow, which also means the covering. He covers to protect. He covers to provide. He covers to ever supply. He covers to meet. He covers for everything that you are in lack of. He shall enjoy the covering of El Shaddai. The all-sufficient one. That's the beauty of Psalm 91. And you see, I said last two nights, I said Psalm 91 was written by Moses with the thoughts of the tabernacle and the Holy of the Holies in his mind. And it is this only Psalm, it is this one Psalm that was both coated by the devil and the Lord Jesus Christ when he was tempted in the wilderness. They both, they both quoted this psalm. Why? Because in this psalm lays the secret of the Holy of Holies. Amen. That he who dwells, he who dwells, comes in, stays permanently. No more of that. Satu serlawanua. Then he shall abide. He shall enjoy. Ah. Amen. Amen. He shall enjoy. He shall enjoy. I said the last two nights. We have always been in want. We've always lacked. Simply because we don't know the secret of coming in and dwelling in the sacred place. God is good. So to draw nigh, one must do a few things, or a number of things perhaps. One, he or she must be willing to leave where he is, or the place where he is. To draw nigh, he or she must leave the place, or leave where he is, or the place where he is. He must leave his present position, condition, comfort zone, Away from that which holds him back and make the sacrifice and the move into a position of personal involvement with God. To draw nigh is to be willing to cut away, to move out, to take a step forward, to come from where he was or where you are into a place of personal engagement and personal involvement with God. Amen. You see, that's the secret of our dwelling in the presence. You've got to leave the outer court and come in into the inner court. And you've got to leave the inner court and enter into the secret place. When you enter into the secret place, as you come out of the outer court, through the inner court, into the Holy of Holies, you are entering into the place of engagement. You are entering into the place of personal involvement. You are entering into the place of secrecy. You are entering into a place of intimacy. You are entering into a place of manifestation of the power of God. One, you must be willing to leave where you are right now. But this Holding on 
to the place where you're supposed to be left. Amen. The reason why you are under curse because you are still hanging on to the place where you're supposed to be left. Oh, Sarah Kainaina, no more, no more, no more, no more. Sarah Kainaina, Sarah Kainaina, no more, no more, no more. Sarah Kainaina, no more, no more, no more, no more. Sarah Kainaina. Must be willing. Hallelujah. Oh, you see, to be willing to leave the place where you are and draw near is to take the Abrahamic step of faith. Hallelujah. To leave where you are and move forward into the presence of God is to take the Abrahamic step of faith. Hallelujah. And enter into the Abrahamic blessing. God is good. God is good, church. All the time. All the time. Genesis 12.
Oh. Amen. You must be willing to not to look back. The third one, you must move forward progressively. Move forward after every experience. Be willing to release the past experience and strive for what is ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. Both of these are Pauline steps of faith. The second one, it can also be called the mosaic or the Moses step of faith. Because in Hebrew 11, it says that Moses said, it is told about Moses, that he was willing, he was willing to give up the wealth of Egypt so that he could stay and identify with the people of God. Hallelujah. It says that the wealth of Egypt will was the, the, the wealth of Egypt were not as wealthy, as valuable as being found in the presence of God. God is good. I'm almost done. Don't worry. Some way to make a canoe sacula to him. The letter went to me call your mother to the old Turango Kana. Hallelujah. You see, brothers and sisters, when I when I went down last night, I was just asking the Lord. But I didn't have the answer until this morning. I was asking the Lord, Lord, why did James write this? Amen. Why did James write this? Yesterday I said that when Moses wrote Psalm 91, he had the tabernacle in his mind. This morning, after researching, I found that James was a priest. Hallelujah. So when he wrote this, he knew what it means to draw in and dwell in the secret place. Hallelujah. And abide under the shadow. So he was also a priest. So James was a man of the presence. He knew what it means to be in the presence and to be out of the presence. Amen. If you see before this, he said, if you receive, if you, if you, if you submit yourself to the Lord and resist the devil, he will flee. And then it goes on to say, excuse me, goes on to say, draw near, and he will draw near to you. You see, in here, in here, is Psalm 91. Because in Psalm 91, the devil who was, was told in James 4, 7, Flee the Lord when Psalm 91 was quoted. How many want to go to God? We don't know we can go to Psalm 91. Not until I read Martin, Ralph Martin's word, Bible, biblical commentary, that I realized that James was not only a Christian Jewish leader, but he was also a priest. Amen. And it was so lovely that he was thrown from a pinnacle or from a tower and clubbed to death because of his stand as a pious priest and because of priestly jealousy. He knows when to fast and when not to fast. He knows 
what it means to discipline what he puts into his body. Wait. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you, can you get what I'm trying to say? What I'm trying to say is this. The guy who wrote this, who knows what it means to be a priest. Three things, three areas only that is very particular. One is what he puts into his body. Amen. Amen. The second one, he was always very particular. Praise the Lord. With his prayer habits. Woo. He was always very particular with his prayer habits. This is the same guy. It was told of his life as being the greatest intercessor in the, Intest in the New Testament church. James was known to be the greatest intercessor in the New Testament church. He was always in the presence of God. He was always intercessing. He was always praying. And yet, when he looked into the church, the church was full of talkers rather than prayers. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the last one. James was always particular because he is a priest. He always wear fine linen materials when he's in his chamber of prayer. He always wear fine linen garments. For the last two nights, I've been preaching on fine linen. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Amen. To be able to understand what fine linen is, my time says quarter past 11, so you'll be in time for 12 o'clock for lunch. I'm almost done. Oh, I'm just about done. Amen. Now let's consider the role of the high priest. For the last two nights, I've been preaching on the high priest. Being the man in the presence. The Bible says that the consecrated robe represents the materials of the wall. Or the material wall. And this is what the high priest or Aaron usually does. Or, you, or, you, or always did. Whenever... It's time for sacrifice, especially in the Holy of Holies. The Bible said that when, what you would do is, he would, when he comes before the ark of the, 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 the tabernacle of the sacred place, or the Holy of Holies, this is what he would do. From the outer court to the inner court, he would wear his priestly robe. But as he comes in, before the tabernacle or the sacred place. Listen to this. As he comes towards the sacred place, before he enters, he takes off his priestly robe. With a priestly robe, he can offer any kind of sacrifice. But as he's about to enter into the Holy of Holies, because in the Holy of Holies is the blood sacrifice. He will have to offer the blood sacrifice 
not wearing the regular priestly robe, he will have to wear fine linen. And the Bible says this, as he approaches the secret place, he would take off his priestly robe and we would have another bath. He would have another wash. After washing, he would put on a linen garment. It's a linen garment. It's a linen sash. It's a linen turban. It's all linen, fine linen, white. And he would wear the fine linen with the blood. He would approach the ark of the presence. And then he would shed the blood. Shed the blood on the ark of the presence between the cherubim or between the shadows. The shadows, the wings of the cherubim. And then he would have an intimacy with the God. A fellowship with God. And this is what would happen. Look at this. Look at this. Look at me. This is what would happen. As he, wearing the fine linen, is having fellowship with God, intimacy with God, those who are outside the tent, from afar, they would look towards the ark, or towards the tent, and they would see from afar the covering of the secret place or the covering of the tabernacle. And as they look from afar or from outside, looking over into the tent, they would know if the priest, the high priest, is fellowshipping with God, is having an intimate time with God, if he is being accepted in the presence of God, they would know because from afar, they would see, they would see the covering of the tabernacle going up and down like someone breathing. And when the covering of the tabernacle begins to move up and down like someone breathing, they would say like this, hey, the supreme one, the one who owns, is in residence. Amen. Hallelujah. The supreme one, the one who owns, is in residence. He's never neckling. Or when I close out, then I start. When I start, none of the big car can I. Satiko. Don't say that you love me. Say you love Satiko. Nakalo, hello na ba, letamu. Kila mera. Hallelujah. Sare. Ya, na se ni no na bi kiri bari. Wi no mai tu. Roma. Go sanglo. Me na bi kiri bari tikina. Ori na mai tu. Ni na rei ni no mumbul. E pa gato ya. Because it is only for him and his God. 
<laughs> it's not for the outsiders. It's not for those who does not hear the conversation within. That suit, that linen gown, it's only for him and God and for their time alone. Can I live now? We take our ordinary garments right inside. God does not allow ordinary garments in the throne. Amen. Church, there's no dirty linen in the throne room. The dirty linen remains outside. That dirty linen is the linen, is the, is the priestly robe that the priest wears when he does the burnt sacrifice and all other sacrifice. But when he comes to the atonement, he wears linen. Live alone, we dare double. We wear double into the presence. Yes, I'll cut you off. Many times we bear, we wear double into the presence. We don't take off the old. We just leave the old in and we put it on another in. Mongay, rey, rey, mi naka tumay, yu e mano tilom. Mongay, 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 mi naka tumay, yu e mano tilom. You mean nothing like one tibet. But live only double or go to twenty long. Satuma is Sulman Ramana, Satuma is Sulmakawa, Satuma is Sulu to come along. On the Vientara may tumba into the Bosso Bosovinaka, into the Rini Vinaka, into the Tavi Winning Avinaka, and into the Kara Sutu Vinaka. Mongeli no more my Lavalina, and his Sir Nakalo. Mongeli no more my Sal, the Sir Nakalo. Mongeli no more the Kamu Vigara, and his Sir Nakalo. You're going to the law and a common. There is no dirty linen in the throne. Amen. You've got to take it off. You've got to take it off. Listen, judge. Drawing near to the presence of God will take it towards the place where you will have no more choice but to take off the old and get on with the new. And then as you get on with the new, then you will have access into the secret place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Of El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. God is God. Oh, you see here in the throne room, access is limited. The Bible even says that no one is to ever come or be in sight when the priest goes in. Hallelujah. He must be in the right time, the right garment, the right attitude, the right spirit. Hallelujah. Before the throne, he must take off his ordinary priestly robe and put on a good, clean bath and wash by other priests. And then he would put on the sacred linen tunic with linen undergarments, a linen recess around him in a linen tunic. Yes, there is no dirty linen in the throne. Oh. There are few things that you can note here. One, he must be pure. When James wrote this, he wrote it from a priestly perspective. He wrote it as a priest. He said to draw near. He knows that we've got to be pure. We've got to wear fine linen and material only. We must not wear double. And there must not be any trace Spoil, spot, soil on the linen materials. Listen to this, church. There's only one state that God accepts. That is why they take off the ordinary priestly garment. Because those garments have been supported by the burnt offering, the fat offering. But the linen, because he has the blood on his hand as he walks in. There's only one stain that the Lord accepts in the presence, and that is a blood stain linen. God is coming. Just about done. Just about to shut. Amen. I believe God is speaking to someone here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Mark 9, 16 to 17, I mean in Matthew 9, 16 to 17, 
Mark 2, 21 and Luke 5, 36. It says something like this. That you cannot sew together, sew together old garments and new garments. And that you cannot put new wine into an old wineskin. You have got to bring a new wineskin if we have to keep that new wine. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. God wants to put new wine into each of our lives. But the skill must be Amen. And God does not accept that. Today, I have been saved from the beginning of this summer. This is a conditional saving. You draw near to Him. In the way that He wants you to draw near, He will draw near to you. I was coming to here and I come in the scene of a life. Ramana, it has always been God's desire that He draw near to us. It has always been God's desire that He draw near to us. But you and I must come in, must draw now under His terms and conditions. We've got to be pure. Amen. Amen. We've got to be pure. We've got to be fine. We've got to be washed. We've got to be bloodstained. If we have to have God to draw near to us. Tudo que eu vou criar, eu vou descer no meu dedo.